I want to share about an overcoming life because the Bible teaches us we are more than overcomers. It says that we are victorious in Christ. It's got all these things, but often as believers and, and, and honestly speaking, we, we, we actually shove a lot of the things to the side to, to make it seem like we're all right. But today I want to look at, at, at something and maybe give you something that you can take into your own life and just be like, this is how I'm really going to just receive freedom from what I'm going through. But let's pray. Lord, I ask this morning that as I share from your word that you'll just speak to us, that you'll stir up faith. Lord, and I ask that by the power of your spirit, by the power of Jesus and the power of your, your word that is active and living, that you'll come and just firstly show us that we can live an overcoming life and that we can have freedom and that we can walk with you in abundant life. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take you to uh, three scriptures and then we're going to talk about it and then, uh, and, uh, yeah, and then we're going to look a bit further. Romans 14 verse 23 says, But whoever doubts is condemned if they eat. Because their eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. Uh, so uh, I will leave that with you for, do, uh, uh, for you to do homework. But uh, uh, Paul is busy talking about eating and drinking and different things. Can I eat that? Can I eat that? Can I drink that? Can I drink that? Uh, all these different things. And then uh, towards the end, he says this thing. But I want to focus on the statement there. And it says, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. I'm going to take you to another scripture verse, Hebrews 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'll take you to another scripture verse, John 16, verse 9, and I want to put it in the New Living Translation. It says, The, the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in Me. Charles Spurgeon says this. He says, the parent of all sin is unbelief. Other people have said, the root of all sin is unbelief. It's where all sin and everything against God actually springs up from the place of unbelief. That's, that is the root. That's from where, from where it comes. Unbelief in God unbelief in Jesus. I've explained over the last few weeks, uh, just lo looking at the gospel and different things, and I've put it in there, uh, just, uh, just, just, just in certain instances, but, but me being drawn to sin, or me sinning, actually, if you go down to the very roots of what is the cause and why I'm doing that, it's because of unbelief. If we want to look at, uh, at, at pornography, uh, for example, it's got its root in unbelief because it's got this belief that I can find satisfaction, I can find fulfillment somewhere other than God. It's unbelief. If we look at uh, the sin of lying, it's rooted in unbelief that if I just tell a lie, at least I'll be able to get out of that. It's, it's, the, it, it's believing that God is not able to, by truth, free me and set me free, that I have to make my own way, that God's not big enough to truly help me. And you can take anything in life, anything where sin is really in your heart, and you can draw it down to unbelief. We'll even look at Adam, uh, at Adam and Eve, with Eve. Where did the first sin start? Did God really say? Doubt. I heard a statement by a guy named Jeff van der Stelt. I think his name is, his weird surname, I don't know. But he said this, you get unregenerate unbelievers, but you also get regenerate unbelievers. So you get people that are not born again and they are unbelievers, but you get people that are born again but, are, but have areas of unbelief in their life. And that's why a lot of Christians, and even myself in a lot of different ways, I'm caught 
in sin or caught like, how am I going to get through this? Why do I feel all this anxiety? Why do I feel all this fear? Why do I feel like I need that? Why do I feel like I need that in my life? And it comes down to unbelief. So I want to quickly just take you to four questions that we need to ask ourselves. And this gets us to the root of what it is. Because Christianity, actually believing in Jesus, is not behavior changes in essence. It causes behavior changes, but it's not just that. It's just a moral change. It's just uh, Christianity is not making bad people good. No. Christianity, the gospel, is taking people that are messed up, and that's all of us, and by the power of Jesus, we are born again, we are saved, and we are set free. It comes down to Jesus, and we looked at those three scriptures it comes down to faith. It comes down to belief. If we were really to believe, we would be set free. So four questions. First one is, who is God? We need to understand who God is because that's where our worldview and the foundation all starts. If we've got a faulty view of God, it will cause a lot of other issues. If we think God is not loving that's when we run after other things for love and acceptance and all that. If we think God is just there to punish us and, 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 and He's just there with a, with, a, with, a, with a stick trying to hit us, what it will cause us is to run somewhere else to find out who God is. So that's the first one. Who is God? And you can, uh, for those of you who want big words, that's theology, the study of who God is. The second one there is what has God done? So if God is who He is, and if God is who the Bible says He is, what has God done? Because that proves who He is. And that's specifically in the person of Christ, because the good news is Jesus. It's found in Jesus. And we need to understand what God has done. You can call that Christology. Christology. Then the third question to ask, who am I in light of God's work? So, if that is true, this is who God is, this is what Christ has done, who am I in light of that? What does that tell me about myself? We read, we read in the book of James that, that when we read the Word of God, when we look into the Word of God, we're actually looking into a mirror. What it's telling us is that, is that we see who we actually are. And if I walk away and forget about that, then I'm doing all these other things. But the Word of God tells me who I actually am. I heard a statement once by a pastor. He said, if you have stinking thinking, you need a check up from the neck up. <laughs> it's in your mind. Sometimes we just need to realize who we are because of what the Word of God tells us who we are. And we need to start to believe that. The fourth question we need to ask ourselves is, how should I live in light of who I am? You see, a lot of us want to change that fourth question, and, and, and we want to have the answer. So, I'm stuck in this, or let's, let's, let's use an example. I'm stuck in anxiety. I've got a lot of fear about different things, fear about the future, fear about all this, and I, I don't know. And that's what you're experiencing. That's what you're going through. And you're just like, I just, I just have to change that. I just mustn't fear. I just mustn't be stressed anymore. You're never going to overcome that. You're never really going to go. And the more you tell yourself, I just mustn't stress, I just mustn't stress, the more you're going to stress. Because now you're focusing on that. So what a lot of times is what's happened is we try to make behavior changes, but it's not long-lasting and it's not really deep because it doesn't come from the place of who God is, a revelation of God. A revelation of God will transform your life more than you trying to just by your own self-control and your own power and your own things trying to sort something out in your life. But what I want to do with those four questions, and this is very, I'm just putting it out to you, it's a, it's a lot. Turn those four questions around to see what is actually going on on the inside. Ask yourself the question, what am I doing or experiencing? So often, if we uh, if find ourselves stuck in something like uh, if stealing is a problem for someone, 
why do I steal? And it could be big things, it could be robbing banks, <laughs> it could be just taking uh, stuff from your office and just putting it in your pants pocket, ah, they won't notice that I've taken a whole bunch of things or, or whatever. But why am I stealing? Because that is the sin, that is the behavior that's seen there. Why am I anxious? Why am I experiencing that? What am I feeling that? Or why am I lying about something? Or why am I addicted to that? Or whatever it is. What am I doing or experiencing? And then the question then, which is, that's, that's, the, that's the outward thing. Those are the obvious things. But then you have to go a bit deeper and you have to ask yourself the question, in light of what I am doing or experiencing, what do I believe about myself? So let's take that stealing for example. So stealing is the behavior that's there. But under that, there's something that I believe about myself. Because it's who I believe about myself. That's, that's, that's where I act from. So maybe there's the thing that I believe about myself. I don't have enough. I lack in the area. And actually, maybe what you believe about yourself, I'm, I'm not loved. Because if I really felt loved, I wouldn't actually be trying to get more things because the person that loves me would, would actually provide for me. So what do I believe about who I am because of what I'm doing? And then we have to take it deeper. So... What do I really believe about Christ then? If I'm stealing and I believe that I've got a lack and I believe that, 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 uh, that I'm not loved because if I was loved, the person would, 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 would truly care for me, what we're probably then believing is that the work of Christ on the cross is not enough. Jesus is not enough for me. That's why I need more. That's why I'm stealing. So we go back to that and then we're like, Yo, but if the work that Christ did on the cross, if that's not enough, then what do we actually believe about God? And we start to see that we have doubts that God actually can provide because He gave us Jesus and if Jesus is not enough, well, then God actually can't provide. He's actually not all-powerful. He's, he's not actually a very loving God. But then we get to that point, and then we realize, yeah, but that's not really what I, be, uh, what I believe. Because I really do believe that God is all-powerful, that, that He is who He says He is in the Word of God, and, and that He loves me fully, and, and He's my Jehovah Jireh, He's my provider, and He will provide me everything, and, and, and He's the one that gives me everything, and He's the one that's always there with me, He's walking with me, He's forever faithful, and all those things, and those are the things that we really believe. So how is that seen in the work of Christ, and that's seen in God gave Jesus and he lived a life here and he died on the cross, took all of our sins, paid the price for that, but rose on the third day so that, so, so that we could experience the power. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me. And uh, Jesus is enough because of everything he did and he gave everything for me. And we realize Christ did it. That is what God has done for me. So what does that tell me about who I am? It says, I'm absolutely loved and Jesus is enough for me. Therefore, I don't have to steal. But where does it come down to? It comes down to belief and faith. I want to ask you this morning that you just look at your life, whatever you're going through. There's a lot of causes for a lot of different things. Someone once said, as unbelief comes in many, many different forms and shapes. And it does. Because the devil is so cunning. He comes with his thoughts. He comes with his doubts. And before you realize it, your behavior and what you're experiencing is like, this isn't what Jesus died for. This is not proclaiming the gospel, you know. 
That's not what it is. And we have to go deep and we have to believe. Just like, Lord, give me a revelation of who you are and believe it. I want to take you to a final scripture. Mark 9, verse 23 to 24. Someone comes to Jesus and says, If you can, will you do something? And Jesus answers and says, If you can't? Question mark. Say, so Jesus, like, who, who, who am I? You know what I mean? But he says, Everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I don't know where you at in your life today, but I'm, I want to close this morning and just ask you the question, are you living an overcoming life? Or do you find yourself trapped by negativity? Do you feel yourself trapped in a sin that you just can't overcome? Do you feel yourself trapped in, in, in an addiction? Do you feel yourself trapped in just a way of thinking that isn't biblical and it's just destroying you? Or do you feel yourself trapped in a depression? Do you feel, feel yourself trapped in your past? Do you feel yourself just like, I, I, just, I read about it in the Word of God, I see the miracles Jesus did, I see everything, but I'm just not experiencing that. If that's you, I want to ask that you just go to God and you say, God, reveal yourself to me. I know that this anxiety I'm experiencing isn't from you. Something's wrong. I know that what I'm doing is not the way you would want me to act. Something's wrong. And by taking you to the first three verses that I took you, you realize that the parent of sin, the root of sin is unbelief. So if you want to overcome that, and if you want an overcoming life, you need to believe the gospel. You need to believe what Jesus has done. You need to believe in God. You need a revelation of God. Let's pray. Lord, so many times as a church we want a lot of different things to set us apart and Lord really the only thing that sets us apart from the world that makes us different from the world is that we believe in you we've repented and Lord you are setting us free and you are transforming us day by day to become more and more like you Lord, the gospel is the only thing that sets us apart from the world. Lord, and so many times we just try to be good people. We try to live this life. And, but if we really take a look at who we are in our hearts, we realize we're not living an overcoming life. We read those scriptures, I am more than an overcomer. We read those scriptures that all things are possible. We read all these things and... And we just, actually deep inside, we're just like, what is actually going on? But I ask, Lord, that this morning, that you will come and that you will bring revelation. Because if we really believe that you are who you say you are, we would live an overcoming life. We would live an abundant life. I ask, Lord, as I've just shared different illustrations about different things this morning, I ask, Lord, that you'll cause faith to arise in our hearts once again. I ask, Lord, that hopelessness would disappear from people in the name of Jesus because you are a God who is enough. You are a God who has made a way. And when we believe you, when we have faith, that's what makes all the difference.